Senator Argo, are aircraft parts and repairs exempt from sales tax under SB or HB 76? And if yes, why? You know, why are certain things excluded? Whose money's behind it? The, and, and Jim Cox can certainly talk to the, the general issue of what was and what wasn't included in, uh, in House Bill 76 and Senate Bill 76. That, of course, wasn't just done by legislators. It's really the product of 80 taxpayer groups all across the state who, who went through it, say this exemption makes sense, this one doesn't, this one does, this one doesn't. On the aircraft, this is one where I ventured out on my own because people at the Reading Airport, people at airports all across Pennsylvania said, look, some states in the Northeast, including just about all of our neighbors, had exempted or greatly cut back on aircraft taxes. And what happened? Hundreds and thousands of new jobs. Now, in the six counties that I represent, from Sinking Spring up to the racetrack at, at Pocono, the first question I always get is, when are you going to do something about that damn school district property tax? But the second question I always get is, when are we going to get more decent family sustaining jobs here? I believe many of those jobs at the airport are just that. I want more of them. And we were told in no uncertain terms that when the other states moved ahead in this process to do that, their end result was thousands of new jobs. That's what we want to do here at the Reading Airport. I could, real quickly, I did something a couple sessions ago for helicopters. Uh, they were manufactured here, they were taking them out of state to retrofit them because they would have not to pay the tax. So we were losing that money. So we did something for helicopters, and uh, if you drive to Southern Chester County, the Coatesville Taxpayers Alliance will tell you, uh, Sikorsky down there has built tremendously. Every time you turn around, they're adding on and they're adding new jobs to that area. So that type of incentive does work. I think uh, Senator Argo was, uh, was waiting for me to pinpoint what was or was not in the bill. The, the current language of, of uh, both Senate Bill and House Bill 76, uh, and, and I can't blame, blame Dave, he's not uh, memorized the bill. It's, it's 130 some odd pages, so uh, it's a lot of intricate detail. I probably wouldn't know it if I hadn't worked so closely with it. We did not carve out uh, any new exemptions. And because existing law does not exempt aircraft, we did not place that into House Bill or Senate Bill 76. Uh, our goal was to remove existing exemptions to generate revenue. So no new exemptions were created, and that means that aircraft parts and, and so the sales of aircraft uh, will remain taxable uh, unless the law is changed uh, by another bill in the legislature. I have a question that I've raised a couple times before at a Berks County Patriots meeting. Uh, I'm very active to the dismay of my school board. <laughs> For 10 years, I fought my school district and pretty much was told to sit down and shut up. There is another aspect to property tax that needs to be addressed. It is the spending of the school districts that has to be toned down. I come to find out after 10 years, my district has a big issue. I have a superintendent that was there for 15 years who passed away and single-handedly killed our district. Now we're paying for it. 10 years I brought these issues to the school board, was told to sit down and shut up. Nicely, sometimes not so nicely. My question is, somehow you need to work a forensic audit of every school district in this state. And I need a forensic audit. I don't mean what they do now. I don't mean take the numbers that the school district gives them. I mean go through the books like I do when I find checks written to cash. Your question, please. My question. Who was that? Who said that? <laughs> okay, my question is. Can we not work into this property tax law or a new law that forensic audits be required? Look what happened in Reading. And the second part of that is, 
We have, I believe, on the teacher certification revocations over 700 teachers who have had their cer certificates taken away, they've been suspended, etc. According to state law, I believe. Your they, question, please, sir. Get a question. They lose their pensions. Has anybody monitored that? And are we keeping track of the people who have lost their pensions and the amount of money that could possibly be saved? If I could jump in, I, I was just telling Jimmy, I'll address the latter part of your question in one second. I put in five bills over the last several years. First of all, consolidation of the school districts. We have 500. Why don't we have 250? We can save a hell of a lot of money. In the 1960s, we had 1,000. We went down to 500. What's the magic with 18 school districts in Berks County? What's wrong with one? That's it. How about general services, purchases of all supplies? I know the numbers that I had crunched. He does the front end. I was doing the back end. Saving money? We could save a ton of money. General services could save between one and one and a half billion dollars if we did the purchasing for all the school districts. Nobody wants to hear that, especially business managers. One contract for teachers, one health care a health care plan for teachers. Now let me just say this about First County. 14 of the 18 school districts, okay, formed a consortium about three or four years ago. I poked these school directors when I would go to meetings. Once a year, we're all invited. And they thought I was a pain in the ass because I asked too many damn stupid questions. What are you doing with our money? What do you, you spend 14 billion and 11 billion from the state, 25 billion, and you never account to us, Auditor General, they do audits, 200 auditors, I know you're gonna hit the bell, 200 auditors, okay? You have 500 school districts, plus plus six, 7,000 municipalities, they all get state money, 67 counties, 50 some cities, forget about it. You can't do it, you don't have enough people. I agree with you, but 14, hold on one minute, 14 <laughs> school districts in Berks County, now listen to this, the IU and the Tax Claim Bureau, Find me, and I'm sitting there, I thought, Tommy, shut up, don't say anything, don't poke them. They always think you're a pain in the ass when you keep poking at them. So I sat there, and all of a sudden, some of you might have been at that meeting, and they said, we formed a consortium, and we saved over a million dollars in the health care. And I thought, what have I been saying all these years? Why can't we do it for the whole state? You talk about saving money. School buildings. We have architects and engineers. We can design them and build them and save a lot of money. I look at the back end, the spending. Yes, they do the audits, but not frequently enough. They don't have enough manpower or money to do it. That's the bottom line. Anybody follow it up? Sure. And, and on this, on, on school property taxes, I mean, that is the root of the problem is school property taxes. They're going up because of spending at your local school district level. So I, I wanna tell two uh, brief anecdotes. Uh, the first involves a, a member of the audience that I see here tonight, and uh, he is involved with uh, an East Penn taxpayers group, a concerned group in, in our area up in Lehigh County. And I was at one of their events recently, and I commended them for their efforts to actually put in place this year a school budget with no property tax increases. All of you are shocked. I see a lot of shocked faces right now. That doesn't happen very often. But it came about because people like you got involved in the process. And there aren't enough people who are involved in that process at the school district level. So you need to, all of you, organize at your local school district level, go out. What they did in that concerned East Penn Taxpayers Group is then they elected members to the board, they didn't have enough to, to make no property tax increases a reality in past years. Finally, they got a majority this year, and for the first time in 10 or 12 years, there is a no tax increase budget at the school district level. And that's the root of the problem, is at the school district level. And so, if you don't get involved, they aren't going to pass no tax increase budgets. The other thing we can do is, again, harping on that spending, all of us just going to speak at our school boards. And so I went and I spoke to our school district superintendents, a different school district in my district, and they said, you know, because of reductions in funding, and it's only because of the increases in the pension, they're getting more money than ever from the state in the history of Pennsylvania, but their budget is getting gobbled up by pension costs. And so they have to make cutbacks in other areas. And so they didn't want to make cuts to the classroom. 
That's terrific. I received a terrific public education, and I don't want to see those, those classrooms being affected. And so what they did is they did things like they cut out costs from school district busing. $240,000 they saved by not having seniors ride the bus. Anybody who's been to school in the past 30 years knows that seniors don't ride the school the, the bus to school. And so they reduced the, the busing and they were able to save $240,000. And I said to them, I said, well, why haven't you done that before? Their answer, we didn't have to. We were always receiving more money every single year. So we didn't have to scrutinize our budgets. And so all of you need to be scrutinizing their budgets. We need to do that. As citizens who are paying those taxes, we need to scrutinize that budget. We need to get involved in the process. We need to get more people elected to the school board so that you can pass no tax increase school budget. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this question is from the one of the follow-up. Sure. I just want to touch on the lady that's talked about the forensic audit. Just remember one thing. Uh, a good accountant, a good business manager. As a business owner, as I said before, you can make the books look however you want them to look. So you actually have to have somebody go in there and dig. Because uh, let's face it. What happened at uh, in at Reading at the Reading School District? We had the forensic audit. Um, you can, you can make it look however you want, but you know my belief. What has happened in that school district for the past uh, 20 years is probably people that should have been arrested, and uh, you're not going to find that through forensic audit. You're going to have to dig deep. And like uh, uh, Stephen said, you you got to get good school people, uh, good people on the school board, and that's where it's going to start. Thank you. I was going to say, uh, my first elected position was in, I was in my 20s, and I was elected to the school board. I was the first graduate of my high school ever to be elected to the school board. Now, the school district had been in existence for a number of years, believe me, even before me. And uh, when I took over, I took very seriously my job, so I used to go in before the meeting and meet with the business manager, and I'd always have 15 or 20 checks that I wanted to see the checks in the back of the material. He said to me, John, you're the first school board member that ever asked me to do that. So that's the kind of people you have to get on your school boards where they're going to ask the questions and not be afraid to go up against, go up against the, the folks holding all the answers and ask them those questions. That's just a little thing, but I want to bring that to your attention. That I was the first one, and I'm hoping somebody continued after I left. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, this is from the board of the Patriots. It's uh, pension related. Will present PA public employees keep their defined benefit pension even if HB 1352 or SB 2 become law? If yes, explain how either bill, how either bill will be enough to cover the pension shortfall without a major increase in in tax or property tax or any and all taxes. You want to attack our pension? Yeah, I'll. Uh, I'm just going to say that uh, under case law, both federal and state courts have ruled their contracts. So going forward, yes, they would still hold their uh, classification in the current pension system. Uh, no, we're looking at as part of that. Uh, with the continuation of money being paid into the pension fund from those who rent it, use some of that money to, to fund pension bonds to help offset the debt and bring that down. We're looking at all those variables. I don't know, uh, I don't think there's a finalization in Senate Bill 2 at this point as to how to get to that figure, but we're looking to do that without having to go the tax route and to use the existing system to help pay down uh, that debt, plus for other revenue systems. Uh, I know there's no final language in it. I don't know about the House version, but I can tell you about Senate Bill 2. That's where that is. Dave, is there any, did I miss anything on that? Just to reemphasize one thing that, that John had said, we've got to do this, okay? It's such a big issue, we have to do it. We aren't going to get the last vote. Once this is cleared, and God, I hope we get through it this year, the House, the Senate, and the Governor, the final vote is really going to be held by seven people in black robes in the Pennsylvania Supreme Court because there is no doubt that whatever we pass is going to be, I think, violating the wishes of a lot of special interests who have some very expensive lawyers who are going to rush to the uh, to the state Supreme Court. Uh, that's where this issue is finally going to be resolved. That's why we have to be so careful that we do it right. Thank you. Thank you. 
was. That's why I will not, and I won't, uh, I won't judiciary committee, that's why I will not back merit selection. I believe that uh, all authority derives from people, so the judges will stand for election. So uh, I'll continue to do that. Excuse me, uh, Rod Miller wants to make a comment here. Uh, yeah, I, I bit my lip, except the question was, will SB2 or HB1353 change the pension structure for existing employees? I think the answer was, you couldn't do that. No, the, 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 answer, the answer is that all future employees would be under the defined contribution. Existing people who are in the system would, it, it would be like their, their, their current pension would be frozen and then from a certain day forward they would go into the defined, the, the defined uh, contribution. That's exactly what I would hope for, but according to I, my reading of SB2, it didn't touch existing employees, which is 90% of the problem. Yeah. And, and so, on, on the proposal that's out there, let, let me, uh, I'll start from the beginning if I can, this might take more than a minute and a half, but I'll try and be as concise as possible. So, right now, the pension liability is $47 billion. Put that in perspective, we have a $28 billion budget in Pennsylvania annual budget. So obviously this is our largest problem in Pennsylvania. That also assumes a rate of return of seven and a half percent a year on that investment. I don't know how many of you are receiving seven and a half percent a year. So that is an unrealistic assumption. So that liability is probably much greater. When you look at the individuals who are in the fund, you break it down into three groups. So look at new employees, current employees, and current retirees. The proposal that's out there, new employees would be shifted over to a 401k. Current retirees, absolutely no changes, as was mentioned, uh, because of st our state constitution and case law, you cannot make changes to their retirement plans, and also I, I don't think that's fair either. So what you're really looking at is what can be done for current employees. And so the proposal that's out there is that they would stay in the defined benefit plan, but the benefits that they have been accrued to date would be locked in place. The benefits that they would accrue going forward would be calculated on a different formula. And so that's where they're in the, this proposal. There is a, a savings because they will change, they will have a different benefit structure uh, going forward for those future years. And so that would reduce the liability, it's estimated, by about $12 billion. So once you do that, Again, that the current retirees, which are now more than, there are more current retirees than there are existing employees. Again, those liabilities that are outstanding, all we can do is try and wrap our heads around it with things like pension liability bonds, with making our annual employer contributions, which have not been made in the past. All of those things, we have that liability. We, we can't do much about it. So really, you need to close that gate for new employees coming in, shift them over to a 401k style plan so that this problem doesn't get worse, and then we just have to manage the problem that we already have on the hands. I appreciate that, but I guess I'm taking some liberties here, but I read SB2, and I checked with Harrisburg, and consensus is that existing employees are not going to be touched the way SB2 is written. If you all agree that I'm wrong, I appreciate that. And come September the 24th, I'll be up there to discuss it further. I, I'm not familiar with which one SB2 is. I'm, I'm referring to the governor's proposal, which is the existing plan uh, that had come before the legislature with Senator Brubaker's bill. I don't know the number on that one, but... Okay, so th that is the plan. So again, individuals who are in the system would stay in, in the defined benefit program but the benefits that they have accrued today are locked in place. Future benefits would be accrued at a different rate structure, but they would stay in that system. But I believe you're right on the line. I believe you're right. 13. Yes, thank you. I, I think I'm right. I don't want to argue with six qualified people. No, no, but, uh, but the bill, the bill that uh, Representative McKenzie is referring to is House Bill 1352, which is sponsored by Representative Warren Camp. That's I read that one also. Thank you. Back to the audience then. Another comment, follow up, one more follow up. Thank you. Just, just a quick quick bit of history. What really happened 
going back to the Ridge administration, and this was the really dumbest thing we ever did, and we all went into it like a herd of cats, along with the governor, the House, and the Senate. The stock market was doing so good, everybody was fat and happy. So they said to the school districts, they said to the Commonwealth, the investors that handle our money, because we don't handle it, they, they get investors to handle all the pension plans. You don't have to put in as much. And I was saying at the time, I think that's a mistake. Like the old Egyptians, you better put the storage sheds, you better fill it up. No, Tommy, you're wrong. It's going to keep going and going and going. We reduced the amount of money we were putting in, which I thought was wrong at the time. The state did the same, saving money. School districts and school district employees, voila. Now we've got the problem. That's how it all started. And if they would have continued to put the money in like they should have been, I don't think we would have had near the problem that we're faced with today. And one of the things I've been saying, we need to put more money in, both individually, it's gonna hurt, school district employees, state employees, legislators, the Commonwealth and the school districts start ponying up because for several years there, you didn't put the money in. And that's the biggest part of the problem. That's what we're wrestling with today. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. You know, I think what our money means is your money. Ultimately, it's your money, the money. So the answer that we as patrons try to avoid most is the one word more. Because more means, all too often, from Harrisburg, more of your money and more ways to get at your money. And that's what we're, that's why this audience is built. Because more, less would be more for these folks out here. Less would be more for the people's pensions. Because everybody here took a hit when the market went to crap. Everybody here. But your money's not guaranteed. And, and, and we all know that. But more from Harrisburg means more of your money. Amen. Right now, the pension deficit is $41 billion. That's eight to $9,000 per household. So every house that you folks live in, you owe eight to $9,000 to make up the deficit. Art, you ready with another question?